Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, we see your screen. Thank you, everyone, and uh, sorry for the late days. We'll be starting the session. Our first speaker, Alexander Faranti, who's going to present a follow-up uh, work that's because the Google language was already presented on Master Kulala, and now we have the latest news about this part. Thank you, Alexander. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, uh, my name is Alessandro Parenti. I'm uh, very glad to be here, even though only remotely. And today I'm going to present you a uh, work I, I did with professors Cosimo Laneve and uh, Giovanni Sartorra about a method to implement contract amendment um, using the Stipula language. So let's now start with a brief uh, overview of what the Stipula language is. Stipula is a domain-specific language uh, specifically developed for the creation of legal computable contracts, whose main goal is to uh, provide a language which is intelligible and uh, easy or easier to manage and to, to use for even non-IT experts such as legal professionals. To achieve this, Stipula's um, building blocks, uh, uh, main elements, were directly derived from the main concepts and elements of, uh, uh, of contract law, such as the meeting of the minds, permissions, or obligations. Now, for the purposes of this presentation, I would just like to uh, say that uh, Stipula states, which are um, indicated with an at in front, um, are used to enforce the concept of the situa situations of permission or prohibition, thus enacting or precluding certain actions from, from being taken. While assets, um, these are the linear resources managed by, by the contract, such as um, money or uh, goods. But um, let's get to the focus of the, of the present work, which is uh, how to implement the amendment of contracts. We know that there may be various reasons to modify to a contract, to, to intervene on a contract, being it uh, removing material mistakes uh, included um, by the parties, which weren't in their intentions, uh, to adapt to uh, parties' changed intentions during time, or also to adapt to new circumstances that may that may occur this is particularly the case for long-term contract relationships that um, because of the long time span of their life cycle are necessarily exposed to external events that may affect the economy of their business operation and in this particular context uh, um, a particular kind of clause hardship clause have has uh, appeared now, I'm briefly explain what the hardship clause is, just because it's dealt with in the examples I'm going to show. So a hardship clause uh, is a clause which is used to um, manage and to uh, the review of the contract in case of unforeseeable uh, circumstances change the asset, the, um, the balance of rights and obligations between the parties. And even though the formulation of these clauses can be uh, can vary a lot depending on uh, legal system, the party's needs, uh, and so on. Uh, we can extrapolate two main elements, two main conditions common, uh, generally present in all of those. The first condition is a change in the initial circumstances surrounding the contract, which is unforeseeable and independent from party's control to, uh, to different degrees depending on the contract. And the other condition is that this change uh, pro produces a substantial damage or an unduly burden on one of the parties. Then this parties will, this party will have the right, uh, will, will obtain um, the right to obtain an adjustment or the termination of the contract. So we saw that there may be several reasons uh, how, uh, that there may be several reasons to intervene on a contract. However, uh, on the programming leg, from a programming perspective, we notice that uh, depending on the type of modification, there may be the need for a different type of programming solution. In fact, uh, a, a modification can uh, for, could imply simply the modification, the update of a variable, which can be 
considered uh, can be easier to implement or which is a bit more challenging can um, entail the for example the addition of, um, of, of a new function within the uh, old code uh, the removal of a, of a piece of protocol or even the uh, modification of an existing function to add for example a functionality now we try to express all these different uh, situations through higher order stipula which is um, uh, an extension of the stipula programming language which makes use of um, higher order functions and it um, we think that this can handle all these different situations through two kinds of operativities that i'm going now to show you in the following examples so let's get to the example this is a potential contract uh, which is a contract for the supply of flour between a supplier supplier and a client the parties agree uh, that the um, uh, supplier shall make uh, shall deposit in advance the the flour may make this available to the client and on the moment of purchase client will be able to get as much flour as uh, they want from the flour available um, paying of course at the corresponding amount of uh, the corresponding price in article 4 parties also include a hardship clause in case of unforeseen circumstances that uh, may um, provide an unduly burden on one of the parties so let's get to the actual uh, code contract code this is how a stipula contract is written we have the declaration of the parties the fields and the assets here you can see the agreement constructor which is used to for the for to implement the agreement between the parties on the main terms of the contract in this case the cost of flour you see the function send used for, uh, from the farm to uh, from the supplier to deposit the flour function buy used from the client to buy the, the flour and keep in mind this function for this buy function for later and in, uh, in the end we have the hardship clause the hardship function now uh, let's say that after some time but uh, at a certain time there is an unforeseeable change in the circumstances surrounding the contract that produces a sudden spike in the production production costs of flour this necessarily uh, pro produces um, a burden on the on the side of the on the supplier and this is the reason why they ask for um for a for an amendment and they ask to change the the way the way uh, the purchase is, is carried out is operated parties then agree to amend the contract so that the client will deposit the cost of the product in advance and the supplier will receive the payment half before delivery and the other half only afterwards so let's now see how this is in implemented the function hardship is invoked and we should see should notice two in two things uh, in this function first of all that uh, this function includes a new kind of input value which is not uh, required in the other functions this will uh, represent this basically represent the new code that uh, will have to be the new protocol that will have to be added uh, by this party and also note that this function does not uh, present any body like uh, in contrast to the other functions this because the body of this function will be defined in the um, in the new protocol introduced so uh, let's see the new piece of code which is this shown in this slide you can see how uh, how as i said the body is defined at the bottom a new asset the wallet asset is added which will be needed to implement the the escrow the payment in advance by the client a new set of states and uh, new functions of course and uh, more importantly we notice how there is no transition to previous state to the states in the original version of the contract this means that all the functions cannot be called anymore are no more operational this means that um, the, the, the old code was completely 
substituted and that there is no conflict or overlay with previous the previous one the the, the previous function this is a first type of uh, amendment that we call the uh, additive amendment now let's get to the second type so with uh, a second example so let's say that uh, after some time parties want to return to the old protocol however a new law imposes a 20 percent tax on flower sales to bear this new taxation the farm invokes the hardship clause both to increase the lower price uh, and to implement the tax payment now let's get to the actual uh, new piece of code the hardship clause is uh, the hardship function is invoked uh, as before you can see that the body of the function is represented at the bottom we notice how uh, a new party is uh, added the government party which will be needed to implement the tax payment to the state and we see uh, that uh, we went back to previous states so the states present uh, in the in the state present in the original version of the contract this means that uh, the function functions present in the original version of the contract become operational again and in particular if you remember in the original version of the contract we already had a buy function this means that this new function uh, introduced now is overriding the older function now i will get to the explanation of this uh, the functioning of this overriding in, uh, in a moment in the next slide but this type of modification is instead uh, this type of amendment is what we call the, an overriding amendment so in a, in a summary we saw how uh, higher order steeple can both handle situations uh, where we have to add new functions that are not in conflict with previous ones and also situations where we have to where we have to modify existing functions now this last one can be a bit more challenging a bit trickier because as we saw in the second example this entails the introduction of functions that are in conflict with previous ones with older ones now this conflict which is technically called a, a dispatch with in higher order stipula is resolved through um, priorities and constraints now constraints are simply um, the conditions that have to be satisfied for a function to be called and these are uh, this is indicated in in brackets next to the function name as you can see in the red square and for example this constraint means that uh, the client can only buy an amount of flour which is available in the contract which is lower or equal to the flower available and uh, so what what does uh, priority and constraint mean let's uh, get to this and uh, here you can see um, the function the by function present in the old in the old and the new code and you see how the header of this function is exactly the same so same state same name and same constraint in this case the conflict between these two functions is re resolved through priorities so, so through pr priority so giving the priority to the newest um, code added so in this case the new by function will be called and the and uh, the old one uh, won't be operational anymore but we could have thought of a situation where the where we wanted to to introduce uh, the possibility for the client to also buy to also ask to buy more flour than the one available in that case we would have uh, in, introduced uh, we would have defined a constraint that said uh, that that value w was uh, higher than that formula there saying um, meaning that he could also ask for uh, more flour than the one available uh, with this setting we would have two different functions two same functions uh, that would be called differently depending on the input value given by the client at the moment of call um, and in this way th this is what uh, um, priority and constraints in the managing of the dispatch mean and this is our these are 
the functionalities of the stipula, the stipula higher order. Um, this is the formal definition of the higher order function. I don't know if I have, uh, I don't think I have the time here to um, explain this. You can find the uh, explanations on the paper. And now just uh, briefly, I go through uh, some, um, some work we've been uh, currently doing to uh, further improve higher order stipula. One of which is the, the possibility to uh, implement the possibility for the parties to um, express their consent on the modification introduced uh, in accordance to the general principle of mutual consent to contract modifications. And uh, in this context, we would also like to um, deal with ex all the exceptions that uh, the legislator may um, as have, the legislators have traditionally um, uh, given to the to this general principle, such as the um, Sometimes the legislator gives the right uh, to one of the parts of the contract to unilaterally modify some, some parts of the contract. And um, at the same time, we would like to also deal with the uh, case, the situations where uh, in, for example, multi-party contracts, in order to modify certain parts, we, we could, um, a certain uh, majority qualified majority of consent between the parties may be required. And uh, another uh, further work we are we're working on is the, is that the possibility to, um, to have uh, constraints to the amendments uh, introduced by the parties. We could think to a situ um, configuration of a system where parties may want to preclude, for example, the parties themselves to be uh, modified by any amendment, or uh, they may want to preclude the, the uh, update of certain fields or the reachability of some states in order to um, preclude some functionalities. So this, this, is, uh, this was all for me. Uh, you can find the CIPLA prototype to this uh, link. And uh, I'm thank you very much for the attention, and I'm open to any questions. Thank you, Alessandro. Are there any questions? We have a few minutes. Are there any in the audience? Please type your question in the chat. I'm not hearing very well. Uh, Alessandro, I was saying that uh, it's we're moving to questions. Ah, okay. Questions? From the audience, I have one question for you, Alessandro. Yes. Um, how many, what was your methodology for gathering the example of contracts that you use to determine which features to add to the language. And also, uh, it's interesting that you, you found the higher order thing to be useful. Uh, it, it, it also resounds, resonates with my talk this morning, but uh, interesting. So yeah, the main question is about the, the example collection methodology. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you for, the, um, for this question. We, we simply look to um, examples to situations that could could be uh, fitting for um, for um, for modification situation for uh, amendment to contract. So we thought that um, uh, so uh, and also situation that could clearly be found in practice. And we think that um, in this case um, hardship um, hardship uh, clauses and hardship situations are very common especially um, given our especially given our times where uh, circumstances uh, have changed in our societies and have given a lot of uh, um, uh, problems uh, that 
uh, like this. We can simply think to the um, pandemic situations or wars. These are situations very commonly find in, in, uh, found in practice. And uh, that's why we thought to this uh, example in, in particular. Okay, okay, thank you for the answer. So, but uh, you, you don't have a specific set of uh, real world uh, contracts that you collected from somewhere. It's just uh, no, uh, we, we, did, we didn't collect, we didn't collect it from any, any set, but uh, we, we would like also to give more, um, uh, let's say, reality to, to our example. So we will uh, look forward to, to do that. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, Alessandro. Uh, I think thank we you. Move on to the next speaker. Thank you. Mm -hmm.